<laughs> right, I'll just check the camera, yeah? Okay. That's right. Okay, good stuff. You know they say an average of 183,671 people are added to God's recently deleted folder every day. Some of those people retired from life in some of the most outrageous ways possible. For example, vending machines and coconuts sell more real estate and cemeteries than the headliner of Jaws. But what if a can of soda was responsible for ending your way of life without you ever even drinking it? Well, Richard Molesky was the owner of the Tula Monkey Sanctuary in Mexico, and yes, a can of carbonated diabetes is why I said was. Chicago-born Molesky was a natural animal lover who worked at the sanctuary for well over a decade, where he would become close with a lot of the animals, but especially a male dromedary camel whose name was never released to the public. And every morning while doing rounds, Richard would greet the hum jockey with a can of Coca-Cola. Like clockwork, Richard would show up and the camel would enjoy his favorite soft drink. Well, one day Molesky didn't have it and from the way the camel reacted, you would think we were talking about a different kind of coke. The camel proceeded to maul him and even sat on him, which likely suffocated him. It took a rope tied to a pickup truck to pull the steroid llama off of him, but as you can guess, by the time they did, he was... Well, a was. Of course we'll never know exactly what went down because it was between someone who can't talk and someone who won't. But there's a good chance a coca coked out camel can demand over some sugar water. And I believe it because camels 100% be on that kind of timing. Like they're chill 90% of the time, it's just that 10% where someone ends the day on a newspaper. Like one time in Rajasthan, India, a man was entertaining guests in his home when he realized he parked his camel outside in a brutal 110 degree heat. That's 43 degrees Celsius for the rest of the world. Well apparently 6 hours of sun only breeds homicidal intent because as the man tried to untie the camel, the camel suplexed him and slammed him into the ground. The camel then proceeded to divorce the man's head from his body using his teeth. It took about 25 people and several hours just to get the camel to stop ravaging his owner's corpse. That's why you don't beef with something that chews on cactuses like candy. Cause some animals are very much capable of seeking revenge and camels are very much on that list. Which shouldn't really be a surprise since high intelligence means some animals have the capacity to experience every human emotion. Which includes putting the dick in vindictive. Even something like an ant can have as much of a revenge arc as a human. Kidnapping and slavery aren't foreign concepts to ants as some species will regularly invade the nests of others, slaughter the workers, and abduct the larvae of the enemy. These captive ants are forced to bring food to their masters, care for the brood, and even defend the nest of the very ants that kidnapped them. Well, in many cases, these slave ants grow up and proceed to destroy as many of the colony's babies as possible. Pretty much, they jango a daycare's worth of the pupae of the ants that stole them. In some cases, up to two-thirds of the colony were relieved from life by the former slave ants. It's like I've always said, if ants had nukes, they'd end the entire world in a weekend. And if they were human-sized, our president would have six legs. And honestly, ant society is just a video of its own. We are talking about an animal that has a species that'll turn itself into a tactical just to stop the ops from succeeding. Ant society is something out of a simulation, and with a game like the Ant's Underground Kingdom, you get a chance to experience it firsthand without the added risk of kamikazing yourself. It's actually the world's first ant-themed strategy mobile game with millions of players already online. You can hatch and raise your own ant army, including a class of special ants with special abilities. You're free to design and explore ant nests for your ant militia to live in. And when you're not doing that, you get the chance to show a lizard just what an affiliated ant army can do. Or to give a mantis an actual reason to start praying. And if you have a fear of spiders, then this game might be the best form of therapy you can get. And with the cold times on the come up, the Ants Underground Kingdom has just released a brand new winter version, Snowfall and all. This game was awarded the best game changer of 2021 by Google Play, and with stunning graphics and enticing gameplay, it's no mystery why. And as a special thank you for all the support they've received, the Ants Underground Kingdom will be opening up a Black Friday store from November 22nd to the 27th. It's only available once a year, so once it's gone, it's gone. So to see life through an ant's eyes, and to see just how screwed humanity would be if ants were in our weight class, make sure you download the Ants Underground Kingdom using the link in the description. And if you use my personal redeem code CASUALANTS, you'll receive 50 eggs which you can use to cop purple special ants and other neat prizes. Now if one of those eggs happens to be stolen, it might be lights off your entire kingdom, because ants don't play about theirs. Lots of animals don't. There's a lot of animals capable of premeditating and executing acts of revenge. Like you probably already know that crows can remember faces and carry grudges for up to and sometimes over five years. But they'll also pass down their prejudices to their children, so you could really catch a feathery fade over something you did to his crow father. The flip side is that crows also remember those who did right by them. So if I ever happen to get arrested, it'll likely be for using Wendy's fries to weaponize crows. But I'd advise you not to underestimate the carnage that comes with beefing with the Black Air Force of the sky. Once upon a time, a man named Shiva Kawat attempted to save a baby bird he found near his home. Despite his best efforts, the chick didn't make it. 
And even though his intentions were good, all the neighboring crows saw was a past tense baby crow in his hands and that's when violence was selected. For the next three years, he'd get air jumped every time he left his house by a homicide of crows. Like to the point where he has scars and has to travel with a stick to protect himself against the aerial onslaught. So basically, if he would have let that baby crow expire, his quality of life would probably be higher. Expiration of life is the only conclusion when you beef with a buffalo. I'm gonna keep this brief because I've talked about them before, but basically the K buffalo is a 1200 pound John Wick. Not only will injured buffalo literally die trying to drag you down with him. Just like crows, the Cape Buffalo will ride for theirs. In 2020, trophy hunter Claude Clayhans took down a massive male Cape Buffalo. But as he and his crew started loading the sole evacuated buffalo onto his truck, another buffalo from the same herd pulled up and gored him, in the groin no less, which severed his femoral artery and sealed his fate. There have been reports of these trench cows chasing hunters into trees and then camping under the trees just waiting to cut them from Earth's roster. And like I said, it's not just humans getting hunted. Since Cape Buffalo have been known to uno reverse lions by waiting for the adults to go off on hunts just so they can turn the unsupervised lion cubs into wet spots. If elephants don't forget, then the Cape Menace doesn't forgive. And you'd be surprised at just how many animals are smart enough to pay you what you're owed. Like, I bet you weren't expecting Octopus to be in a video like this. Well, roll the tape. It turns out octopus and some fish will work together to hunt, and the squidwards of the sea will occasionally uppercut their co-workers to keep them from cheating them out of food. It's also believed that the octopi that have been exploited in the past are more trigger happy with their tentacles. Of course, there's also a good chance that octopi might taste in fish purely out of spite, but punishing someone for someone else's crime technically still counts as revenge. Also, cephalopods can be just as spiteful with each other. Like here, where a female octopus got tired of a male trying to mate with her, so she proceeded to throw silt on his face. And octopus are more than smart enough to aim their malice at people. As researchers will tell you, sometimes octopus will purposely take aim and squirt ink at the very scientists studying them. Not only that, but they'll often have specific people that they like to pick on. One octopus in an aquarium in Dorset, England, got into the habit of super soaking anyone who would walk past his tank. Another octopus in a Santa Monica Pier aquarium flooded the place after she disassembled a valve in her tank, sending 200 gallons of water rushing onto the exhibit and office floors. And Otto the octopus flashed his middle finger to humanity when he squirted water on a nearby spotlight, short-circuiting the entire aquarium's electrical system. Workers would fix it in the morning, but since Otto would do it at night when no one was around, it took a while for him to be found out. And of course, there was that time a YouTuber tried to live stream herself eating an octopus, but the only thing he fed her was an L. So yeah, octopus have the intelligence to be on timing. But at least with them, the worst case is property damage or a suction cup to the face. Things get a lot worse when you piss off the next animal. Cause tigers are by far the most vengeful animals on the planet. Like the lengths they'll go to get even is what movies are written about. Like in 1997 when poacher Vladimir Markov shot a tiger and then stole part of its kill. His mistake was leaving the tiger with a pulse. That tiger would get him back, but it wasn't in the heat of passion like the camel, nah, this jaw was premeditated. The tiger would stake out Markov's cabin and destroy anything that had the hunter's scent on it. About a day or two later, Markov would return to his cabin where he would be ambushed by the same big cat. That story ended around the same time Markov did, after he was dragged into the bushes and never came out. In another story, a poacher named Baby got put in the dirt by a male tiger in March of 2016. Why is that date important? Well, only a month before, he had murked the female tiger in the same area, leading many to believe that the tiger that packed him up was actually the mate of the cat he had killed. And if you need more proof that a tiger taking a personal leads to cuts on the census, the tigress at Champawat literally subtracted 436 people after one hunter severely injured her. But don't think these stories only happen in Asia. On Christmas Day 2007 in the San Francisco Zoo, three men effed around and two found out. As for the third, well, you can't get a life lesson if you don't have a life. The three men had decided to taunt Tatiana, a 400 pound female Siberian tiger. Well, they learned two things that day. One is that a motivated tiger can jump well over 12 feet. And two, the 12 and a half foot moat wall wasn't to keep the tiger in, but to keep people out. Because apparently out was always an option for Tatiana, who Super Mario jumped out of the enclosure and put the beats on all three men, maiming two of them and turning the third into a chalk outline. So yeah, a wild tiger might be the last animal you want to find out with in India, but a close second might be monkeys. Especially since monkeys and dogs have seemingly gone to war against each other. War is debatable because allegedly the monkeys massacred the dogs. According to residents, some monkeys even took to snatching puppies, carrying them up to a roof, and then letting gravity catch the body. And if you believe this story, then you believe that this all started after a pack of stray dogs mauled a baby monkey and the monkey mafia took it very personal. But we actually don't know for sure what caused this mass puppy homicide. Primates will often feed on the ticks living on animals of different species. So it's possible the monkeys weren't trying to get revenge, but were only after the ticks on the dog's fur. But there's also a chance that Cloudy with a chance of puppy was 100% intentional, especially since that seems to be a signature move for them. Earlier this year in India, a troop of monkeys jumped a family and snatched their four-month-old son, who they proceeded to throw off a three-story building. 
In a separate attack, monkeys broke into a home and dragged away a two-month-old who had been sleeping next to his grandfather. The same monkeys ended up drowning him in a water tank. Yeah, monkeys can be malicious when they want to be, but anyone in Japan will tell you that. Cause right now, a Japanese city is currently under attack by a gang of Japanese macaques. Since July, nearly 60 people have been attacked and injured in the city of Yamaguchi, and the monkeys tend to go after babies, small children, and the elderly, you know, the light work of the population. And the thing is, the traps they set aren't working because the monkeys don't seem to be after food. They're just doing it. And yeah, while this could be a coincidence, there's also a good chance this is revenge. You see, monkeys and really primates in general have a sense of fairness and will lash out when they feel like they've been wronged. In experiments with capuchin monkeys, scientists found that when given unequal portions of food, the monkeys would seem to target and punish the individual that got the unfair share. It actually makes sense for a social animal to actively discourage inequity in the group. But when a monkey feels cheated, it becomes a much more dangerous monkey. In another experiment, one capuchin was given a grape while another was given a cucumber. Despite previously being happy with the cucumber, the monkey seemed to get offended when he saw his peer get a grape and refused to take the cucumber. He even started to become aggressive with his handlers, so yeah, primates don't like feeling slighted. If you don't believe me, jealousy and a birthday cake got this man mutilated by a pair of chimps. So I can't tell you exactly what started the monkey war in Japan, but I can tell you they probably have a reason. Speaking of reason, yeah, I, I kind of had to talk about that. So you probably know the story, but recap. An elephant traveled over 100 miles from a sanctuary and trampled a 70-year-old woman collecting water. Only for that same elephant to show up to her funeral and further desecrate her corpse, this time in front of her entire grieving family. Now, I know I say this a lot on this channel, it's become one of my popular phrases, but this time someone literally got turned into a hashtag. Now, a lot of people have claimed that this woman was involved in poaching and this was just the elephant playing equalizer. I don't want to say that because we don't know for sure and there's a good chance the woman was just at a worse place at an even worse time for the elephant to show up and turn her into a trend. But here's what we do know. Asian elephant Elephants often come into close contact with people, especially farmers, and conflicts often get them injured or put on a shirt. We know Asian elephants often get exploited for logging, entertainment, and poaching, so they have a reason to hate anything human. And we know an elephant doesn't forget. And it wasn't too long ago when an elephant in Thailand ripped a grown man in half and stood over the soul evacuated body for hours after that same man forced him to haul logs in the intense heat. So we know elephants ain't quick to forgive either. So with this story, we'll never know for sure if there was cause or coincidence, but let me put it this way. A hundred miles and a guest appearance at a funeral is one hell of a coincidence. But that's gonna do it for this video. For more consistent content, be sure to follow my TikTok and Instagram. I try to post daily on both. And to watch videos before I post them, kindly consider becoming a patron on Patreon. Also be sure to check out my book, A Hundred Animals That Can Effing End You. The title kind of speaks for itself. But other than that, drink water, hug your mother, and, and you know what? Actually, your father too. He might not say it, but he'll appreciate it. Don't cross an elephant because he might just traumatize your entire family. And I'll see you in the next one.